One of the most elite and difficult to attain titles in the sport of athletics comes from the NCAA division, and this title is the Bowerman Award. Out of the thousands and thousands of athletes on both the men's and women's sides, only one male and one female recipient are crowned as the greatest of them all. And considering the incredible depth that comes from this collegiate division, the battle to get to the very top is absolutely fierce. In 2023, we saw many new names rise to international prominence, as athletes such as Britton Wilson found success in the 400, Jaden Hibbert found himself as the new name in the men's triple jump, and Jasmine Moore from Florida continued to flex her greatness in the jumping events as well. The NCAA division in 2023 was certainly incredibly deep, but considering what she has done this season, it's really no surprise that Julian Alfred from the University of Texas came away with this award. And considering how consistent and dominant she truly was, she may have just had the greatest track and field campaign in collegiate history. Now, to fully understand just how crazy Alfred's 2023 truly was, we have to go back to 2022, where Alfred proved to be one of the greatest power sprinters in collegiate history, breaking the NCAA record in the indoor 60 at 7.04. This was quite the strong showing from the St. Lucian senior on this day. However, moving into 2023, she put forth an unstoppable and downright ridiculous series of races that absolutely tore the record books to shreds. To give you an idea at just how great her 2023 indoor season was, here's a list of the fastest times in collegiate history moving into 2023. And then, here's what it looked like afterwards. Over the course of just a few months, Alfred had improved on her own indoor 60 meter record a total of five separate times, and she typically won every single race by a pretty wide margin. But what had to be her single most impressive race came from this year's NCAA Finals on March 11th, where Alfred ran the race of her life. Now, this was Alfred's eighth 60 meter dash in 2023, and keep in mind that her improvements had placed her well under seven seconds by the end of the season. And even though only a handful of female athletes had ever managed to break seven seconds for the 60 meter dash, she somehow ran even faster for the finals, clocking a time of 6.94, which was only 0.02 seconds off the world record that dates all the way back to 1993 from Arena Privalova. With a powerful start, a rocket-like acceleration, and unfortunately, an early dip at the tape, this was almost a flawless race, and it nearly resulted in a world record. But it was really this single moment that may have actually cost her the fastest time in history, as 0.02 seconds possibly could have been made up had she dipped at the right time. Since the early 1990s, no woman had run faster than 6.95, and along with Aaliyah Hobbs from the United States this year, Alfred made history with her incredible power sprinting. In just three months' time, Alfred had become an undeniable legend in the 60-meter dash. She set various records, she averaged seven seconds flat this year, and now on the all-time list for collegiate athletes, she holds nine out of the top ten times ever run, and these times all came from the previous two seasons. There is no doubt that Alfred's undefeated and unchallenged dominance this year makes her the greatest female 60-meter sprinter in collegiate history, and it's honestly not even close. However, just 40 minutes after her NCAA title in the shorter sprinting event, Alfred struck again, this time in the 200-meter dash. With another nearly perfect race, Alfred dropped the single fastest 200 meter time of her indoor career, and she improved on her PR by more than two tenths of a second. And she somehow defeated the previous NCAA record once again, this time running a time of 22.01 seconds. This time took down the previous mark of Abby Steiner from the University of Kentucky, and it also became the second fastest indoor performance of all time, now only falling behind Merlene Adi's time of 21.87 from 1993. Alfred's power sprinting somehow translated to the 200 meter dash, which honestly requires a completely different skill set to find success. And even though her indoor campaign was practically flawless, her outdoor season soon became equally, if not more impressive. From March 31st all the way up to July 21st, Alfred was completely undefeated over every single race. 
For her first individual outdoor performance of the season, Alford proved that she had not slowed down at all, as she dropped a wind legal 200 time of 21.91, and then in the 100 meter dash, she dropped a crazy time of 10.72. However, this 100 had wind speeds just over the allowable limit, at positive 2.4 meters per second. So while this time almost broke the NCAA record of Shakiri Richardson from 2019, she had to settle for it being just another very quick time in the wind-aided division. Now, taking a step back, looking at her entire NCAA outdoor season, Alfred didn't lose a single race in either the 100 or the 200 meters, not one. And even though she had already raced more than most athletes by the time that the NCAA championships came around, she still had even more to give, as this was easily one of the greatest showcases of overall speed throughout the season. At the NCAA championships in Austin, Texas, Alfred put on an absolute clinic in every race where she ran. For her very first final, Alfred again dominated over the 100 meters with a time of 10.72, which was again almost a new NCAA record, but she again had to settle for this being a wind-aided time as there was a slightly illegal tailwind of positive 2.3 meters per second. Either way, this really was another masterclass in the sprinting division, and it placed her as the NCAA champion yet again. But just like the indoor season, she came back within the hour to run the 200 meters again, and this time she ran the single fastest clocking of her career at 21.73, which again was almost another NCAA record. But the wind just was not cooperating with her today, as it measured positive 2.5 meters per second. For Alfred's NCAA outdoor campaign, she ran a total of 23 races in the 100 meters, the 200 meters, and also the 4x100 meter relay, and she managed to win every single race where she ran. And along with her Texas team, which included Azini Abba, Razadada Delike, and Kavona Davis, she also broke the NCAA record in the 4x1 on four separate occasions, lowering the record all the way down to 41.55, a full half of a second improvement on the previous record of LSU from 2018. If you haven't figured it out already, Alfred's season in 2023 was absolutely unbelievable. From her indoor season to the outdoor season, pretty much everything she did was nearly flawless. Throughout this season, Alfred really did change the status quo of what was possible in the collegiate ranks. However, she still was not done, because after her NCAA season ended, she immediately jumped into an extremely high-profile race in Hungary. And even though she was racing against extremely fast athletes, such as Sha'Carri Richardson, Tamari Davis, Tonisha Terry, and Melissa Jefferson, she somehow came away with a victory in this race as well, running a time of 10.89, taking down Sha'Carri Richardson, who finished in second, in 10.97. The fact that Alfred somehow managed to run so fast, with so much consistency, for such a long period of time, goes against the grain for what almost always happens with NCAA athletes. And then, moving into the World Track and Field Championships, Julian Alfred now had one final thing to prove. Now looking back at her 100 meter season, Alfred was undefeated from the very beginning of her outdoor campaign on April 15th, all the way up to the World Championship Finals on August 21st. And for her 200 meter season, it was almost the exact same story, as she only lost one race moving into the World Athletics Finals, and this race was a very high profile race on July 21st in Monaco, where she placed second in a very quick time once again. And even though many saw her as an undeniable medal threat in both events, the end result from this year's track championships would be slightly different. In the 100 meter finals, Alfred got away pretty decent, but she lacked the key early acceleration that made her so unbeatable throughout the year. And I think that this lack of an explosive opening 60 came from the fact that she had such a long and grueling season, racing more than pretty much everyone else on the starting line. For this 100 meter performance, Alfred ran yet another sub 11 second clocking in 10.92 seconds. But sadly, this was only fast enough for fifth place, finishing behind one of the fastest finishing fields ever assembled, with Shakari Richardson breaking the world championship record in the 100 in 10.65 seconds. Moving over to the 200 meters, this race was absolutely dominated by Sharika Jackson from Jamaica, who is honestly in a completely different dimension from everyone else. And even though she did run another solid time of 22.05, 
Alfred had to settle for fourth place, missing the podium by just one position. This 200 meter final would prove to be Alfred's final race of the 2023 season, and at this point she certainly deserved a break because she had been competing for eight straight months. However, in reviewing her entire season as a whole, I think that this just might be the greatest sprinting season in NCAA history. She managed to rock the 60 meter record books, she only lost one race in the 100 meters, she broke the indoor 200 record, she broke the 4x100 meter record four times, she ran all conditions fastest times ever in the 100 and the 200 meters in the NCAA, and even though she did fall just short of medals in the biggest stages, she made it to the finals in both of these events, where she placed 4th and 5th in the 100 and 200 meters. To say that Alfred had a great season would be a tremendous understatement, because with performances like this literally every week, it is no coincidence that she is now the 2023 Bowerman winner. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, until next time.